education to help make today's program possible. Um, before we get started, I did think that a couple of rules of video conferencing might be in order, since I don't know how many of you are fairly new to this. Some of you might be old pros and some of you might be new, but uh, because we do have a, a number of schools connected, it's very important to go ahead and keep your microphones muted unless you're speaking. That way we don't hear any bells or announcements or anything that comes through through your uh, sound systems there in school. So please do keep your microphones muted. And uh, I think we'll go ahead and maybe go around each of our schools and let you all just quickly unmute your microphones and introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about who you have there. And then we'll get started once Sterling is back on. So by my list, we can start with Bayside Academy. So Bayside, would you mind unmuting? And tell us uh, who you have there, what class, what grade, and a little bit about Bayside, just briefly. Um, good morning. Um, we are in Daphne, Alabama. We're an independent school in Daphne, Alabama. Um, we have juniors and seniors with us, and they are peer counselors and or peer counselors in training um, for our whole campus. Um, there's about um, 25 of us here today, um, and we're very excited to be here and to participate in the presentation. Wonderful. Thanks for joining. And next up, we'll move to Radnor High School. Radnor, can you please unmute and tell us who you have there and a little bit about Radnor High School. Hi, we're Radnor. <laughs> <laughs> we are at your middle school. We're all seventh graders. We're in Wake, Pennsylvania. We're be here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Radner. I kept saying high school, but you're Radner Middle School. That's right. My my apologies, guys. Welcome. Okay, and moving along, how about we go to Shawnee? Shawnee, can you go ahead and uh, unmute and say hello? We are off of mute. All right. Chris. Chris. Well, we are Shawnee High School. I'm a junior at Shawnee High School. My name's Chris, and uh, we're in Medford, New Jersey. We're very excited to be here and participate in this event. Welcome. We're thrilled to have you. And last but not least, how about St. Joseph High School? Uh, good morning. We're St. Joseph High School from Hamilton, New Jersey. We're consisting of 10 seniors and one junior. And uh, we'd like to thank all the element, uh, all the schools participating and the Goodwin Center for hosting this for us. Okay, she wants Diane to call her Wonderful. on the Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'm not sure that we have Sterling back on, so I think um, we're ready to begin for whoever wants to go ahead and kick us off there. Is it St. Joseph? Will you be kicking us off? Sure. Six, three, four, eight. Okay. I'll have her call. Thank you. Bye. Diane, can you call Helen? <laughs> Well, good morning. Like we said before, we're St. Joseph High School in Hamilton, New Jersey. Um, recently, we just hosted United Nations Day here for elementary school and high schools in the area that um, we worked around civil rights and rights of minorities and women and about sustainable development and waste. And we're anxious to hear what everyone has to say about how we can improve civil rights in our communities and any plans that you might have to incorporate that into your school days.
Does any, anybody else have anything that they have to add to uh, anything that their schools have done as far as awareness for civil rights and social injustices? Okay. Here at Radnor Middle School, what we've been doing lately, we've been reading a lot of books on Martin Luther King. We've been reading a lot of books on Rosa Parks. And we've gone more into depth as we get older on the whole history of African-American segregation, discrimination, and civil rights. And also on Monday, we're having a day of service where we're all coming and we're setting up um, clothes, uh, placemats, and valentines for um, like soldiers and sick children. And also we're doing a gene donation where we'll donate gently used genes to kids who don't have any or need a pair. That's, uh, that's an awesome idea, and I condone you on that. Um, does anyone use social media to promote awareness of these issues? Shawnee High School could uh, speak to that. Yes, definitely. I think that right now we have a generation that is so based on social media, and that's a great form of advertisement, a great thing, you know, way to get the word out. And uh, we definitely have different clubs, including our multicultural club of Shawnee, that tries to promote different ways. And I think social media, Facebook, Twitter, is a great way to get the word out, get message out about um, civil rights and injustice all across the nation, and try to expose stories so people can have a better understanding, maybe read articles, and maybe find more insight on that topic. Go. 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 Um, recently, we just had a Jewish film festival, and it just showed a lot of pictures of the artists from that time and how they expressed their feelings about being in the Holocaust and at all the different concentration camps, and it was really sad. Uh, speaking of Jewish discrimination, I was recently up in New York uh, at the United Nations for a conference, and there was actually a Jewish lady, and she said that it's aw it's awful to have to walk the streets and like put all her friends in danger because she does wear um, her her uh, yarmulke, so and she doesn't want to like she doesn't want to have to give up her religion and her beliefs and her traditions to have to do that. So like it's kind of an awful thing that people have to come to that. Right. Has anyone... Uh, could Shawnee High School add to that? Sorry about that. Um, I didn't realize that we were changing topics. Based on that, right now in um, history class, we are in U.S. History too, um, honors, and, and we're learning about all the different aspects of the Holocaust and what detrimental damage that was and what a terrible thing. And we also watched um, the Schindler's List. We, we had an in-school assembly to watch that presentation of a movie, and it was, it was really insightful, really depressing. But it was a, a realistic perspective of what happened in the Holocaust, and these things obviously cannot repeat itself. History cannot repeat itself. That's why we're studying it today, and it's very um, important that we expose this message. Can I add to that? Um, in addition to that, on January 30th, we're going to be doing an assembly uh, for the juniors who are currently in that class, where we'll be recanting the tales of the girls who actually went through the Holocaust, and we'll be actually reading actual letters from the Holocaust directly to our students to help them understand it better. Representing Red. Um, we're doing there's a summary for like the Jewish Holocaust. It's like an assembly with a lot of um, like an acting company, and they're like reenacting the Holocaust to like show awareness for it. Jennifer. Ms. Oxenford, are you still with us? Uh, she is. We're trying to test with Sterling to get their audio working. Is there a question? Okay, okay. okay. this is this is Diane Bannon, also from the Goodwin Holocaust Museum, um, positioned here at Shawnee High School. 
So I'd like to make sure that we get moving in the right direction while Sterling is trying to get on board. So I had to leave the room. I understand that Shawnee spoke. Um, what we'd like to do, you know, basically in honor of Martin Luther King's Day of Service, which is shortly upon us, we wanted to bring all of you together as students and get your ideas on what is important to bring a school together in terms of tolerance and acceptance and diversity and making sure that everyone feels welcome at every time. And when we get together as a large group like this, we're able to give each other suggestions. So what we're hoping for with each school is that you're able to share with us what you've done or what you think you possibly could do at your school to make a much safer and welcoming environment for everyone. And if you also have ideas for um, methods of service during Martin Luther King Day, we'd also like to hear that as well. Did Shawnee give that? Were you able to? We kind of wanted. <clears throat> so what we'd like to do is to start with our students here at um, Shawnee. We have Tom, Abby, and Chris this morning, and we would like to have them share with you what's being done at this school. And then we will jump not only to other questions, but we'll jump to the other schools to make sure that you can offer your contributions or questions as well. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over to Chris. Hey, everyone. Uh, right now, I'm representing the Green Dot uh, strategy here at Shawnee High School. And basically, what Green Dot's all about is to try to defeat power-based personal violence. And there are multiple forms of that. And especially, I think the primary form is bullying. And, you know, with all this different... Um, these different avenues with the Holocaust and all these different, um, you know, segregation and, and hatred, they're all a form of bullying in, in their own way and respective way. And what we want to do here at Shawnee is we've implemented this program to try to start with the freshman class and try to work through education and kind of, we did all this training where we all went through this, this process where we kind of had familiar, uh, got familiar with different ways to distract, delegate, find a situation that someone's being bullied, and find a way to solve the situation in a peaceful and productive manner. And, you know, through this training, it was very insightful, it was very productive. We are now trying to pass what we've learned from this training onto freshman classes. Um, so we're going into, right now, freshman classes, freshman health classes. We're exposing this message. We're giving these stories, these situations, to try to eliminate bullying in our school. And although that's a very ambitious goal, we're at least going to try to stop it temporarily and try to do what we can to make a difference in Shawnee High School. And so that being said, Green Dot is, is something that is successful here. We've gone into classes, freshmen are now getting the message, and we can already see there's been some difference within the student body, people trying to be kind and respectful towards others, and that's really our goal with Green Dot. Yeah, in addition to that, um, when we go into the freshman health class, we're sure to hit everybody, and when we do it, we have a group of three students. So. For example, I think me and Abby are in the same group, but Chris could easily go in there. So what's great about it is that it's students teaching students. I feel like nowadays almost the respect for adults and parents has been somewhat lost, and that respect has been shifted over into trusted peers and more trusted students, brothers, and sisters. So I feel like that's the most efficient way we can do it. They realize that we're not just talking to them, we're talking with them. And when you really want to change something, that's how it has to be. It has to be more of a conversation on equal terms where it's no longer, I'm going to talk to you and tell you what's right. It's more so, I'm here with you. I'm going to show you what's right. And it really needs to start as soon as it possibly can. I feel like our culture nowadays is more based toward that violent, uh, arrogant attitude and by bringing the kids in as freshmen when they're probably most impressionable and teaching them all of this, we can maybe have a slight impact there, which will slowly grow. And we're still in the infant stages here. We just started it this year. But my hope is by the time that I'm out of college, I can come back to Shawnee and we'll still have this program going and it'll be a respectful place with almost no bullying cases. Because instead of having to deal with the administration, we're going to see, be seeing students dealing with students directly. 
Another thing is um, it's nice for the freshmen to have seniors and juniors to talk to about bullying and problems. We're always there to help them out, and they know who we are now. So it's nice for them to come to us and need help. And as one of the uh, administrators at Shawnee High School, one of our initiatives has been over the last couple of years is right along the theme of what uh, our students are talking about in terms of students taking uh, the initiative and actually stepping up and identifying when things are are happening in the school that just aren't right, whether they are any type of injustice. Uh, so we have basically we've employed and our expectations are for all of our students uh, to become upstanders instead of bystanders. And when they see something going on in the, in the, in the school that, that's not right, uh, we want them to be able to step in, address it, stop it, and just let their peers know that that's not how, uh, that's not how we're going to act and that's not how we're going to behave uh, here at Shawnee High School because we are tolerant of everyone and we don't want anyone to feel either uh, unsafe or uncomfortable uh, when they're coming here to, when they're coming here to school. Because the primary thing is to come here to learn and have, have a good fun time in terms of the, the overall experience in high school. Now, could we move to St. Joseph's School, and would you be able to share your thoughts with us this morning? Sure. We have a few people who would like to speak on um, in regards to what Shawnee has said and on, in regards of what our school has also done. Yeah. Hi, I'm Juan from St. Joseph High School, and um, we, last year, we did a an event where everyone in the school... We uh, wrote a type of bullying on a brick, and we built a wall of all the bricks, of all the different types of bullying that everyone thought, and it just it showed like all the different types of bullying that people noticed in the school or outside of the school, and it was a a good uh, event for the younger the younger students to notice all of these things. And we have a, a club called the ABC Club, the Anti-Bullying Coalition, and it's where uh, a group of people like outside of school they meet and they talk about the the terrible things that bullying causes to people and how they could react negatively and they try to stop it and they have seminars inside of school and outside of school also. In our global studies program, in every morning we get uh, a current event based on uh, worldly news and we just we touch base on who, what, when, where, why and the global effect and then we uh, <clears throat> We also watch 60 Minutes every Sunday nights, and we write a short summary about it, and we discuss it during class the next mornings. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm a senior at St. Joseph High School. Uh, to ensure that our younger students, such as our freshmen, are not bullied because of their lack of knowledge of high school, we have two programs. Each senior is uh, delegated a freshman to look after. We also have a guardian angel program where the sophomores are delegated to freshmen so that they have someone that kind of just went through the same instances as them so they can kind of learn the ropes and not be made fun of for their lack of knowledge or just are watched over by older people. I'm Brianna from, I'm a senior and uh, we had Joseph from Kenya coming to our um, school last year and he talked to us about discrimination and all his cultures and it really helped show that he is a person just like everyone else. And it really opened a, up a perspective and showed that discrimination is wrong and we should really be a part of it. Another thing we do in our history department is each year we really recognize Black History Month and we really take into consideration the troubles and the, um, and the sacrifices that leaders such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. have gone through in order to sustain a society in which races can live in equality with each other. So we would just like to continue on with that. And we also held... Um, as previously stated, we held the United Nations uh, Student Conference on Human Rights uh, very recently, and we talked about the um, discrimination and minority rights among different uh, races, different genders, and so on and so forth. Hey, 
Okay, going back to Shawnee, uh, why do y'all just do freshmen instead of doing the whole uh, high school since this is y'all's first year? I mean, wouldn't it be better to get the word out to everybody instead of just the freshmen so the juniors can also know what to do incorporating it back into the eighth graders coming up and also the sophomores whenever it's their senior year? Well, we do. We did a mass assembly at first, but that wasn't quite as personable. It isn't quite as relatable. And it's kind of similar why we do the freshmen to like the buddy program, where we're kind of respected around the school. We're the higher ups and they're going to be more willing to listen to us. Whereas if you just have a bunch of like juniors and seniors going into a juniors and seniors, you kind of know them, you're kind of buddies with them, but you're not going to want to try to learn with them. It's not going to be a very productive environment for more so teaching. So by doing it with the freshmen, uh, we're starting off young. I know it's not going to be an immediate result, but we're going to see in four years from now, those kids that we first taught are going to be eventually be the seniors. And we're going to have four years where in four years, we'll have everybody have gone through that training and we're just going to continue it. We understand that this isn't a problem that can be immediately fixed. There's no one fix solution. It has to take time. And the best way to do that is to start off young, focus on a select group, and keep focusing as narrowly as we can to make sure it's efficient and we can do the best we can. And also, off Tom's point, there's one thing that we did last year. We had this huge community event at Shawnee High School. Over 2,000 people showed up from the different middle schools to try to get different perspectives what high school was like, but at that at that uh, assembly, so to speak, although it was after school hours, everyone in the community really witnessed uh, a presentation that I think really narrowed in on also bullying and also substance abuse and all these different things that we covered in order to promote a healthy high school experience and environment. So I think that we did get the message out. We definitely had a lot of sixth, seventh, eighth graders, parents that came to that uh, that event. Again, over 2,000 people at Shawnee showed up for that. It was it was really successful, and we really got those messages out to a younger audience. And now we're working with the freshmen because we think that's an attainable goal. Uh, yes, how we is Green Dot known throughout the school? It absolutely is. We're not just worried about the freshmen, but we think that's a goal to start with. And also, you know, sophomores, juniors, seniors are also aware of what we're doing and hopefully agree with our message as well and, and are trying to help us out. And the Green Dot program is also in conjunction on top of other things that we cover in, uh, for example, like our health and physical education curriculum in terms of character counts and being an upstander, things like that, along with other district initiatives that we do that are uh, completely school based. So this is kind of uh, it's, it's an above and a beyond and it's an additional thing that we're looking to implement. And we do we do realize when we started it that there is going to be a little bit of time that's going to take until we have everybody that's going through uh, the program, but we had to start somewhere, and that's kind of uh, where we decided to to begin with that. And that was an excellent question. Do we have? Yep. Do you have another question before we um, go back to uh, ask questions of St. Joe's? Anybody have another question of Shawnee? Okay, I'd like to go back to um, St. Joseph's High School in Hamilton, and we didn't have a chance to ask questions about your initiatives. I, I was very intrigued by your brick wall. Would Same. someone like to expand on that a little further? Basically what happened was uh, we went around to each lunch and there was a piece of the paper given that looked like bricks and you write on it a time where you were bullied or you witnessed bullying, whether it was cyber bullying, physical bullying, anything, any type of bullying. And they taped all the pieces of paper on a wall in our cafeteria. And like they showed that pe like every single person in our school has had a case in which they were bullied and how much like it really affects us all. And after everyone had put up their bricks, like they tore down the walls as in like they were like tearing down bullying and trying to like fix the problem. That's excellent. We really appreciate your input. I'd like to go to Radnor Middle, Middle School to see if you have any questions or do you have any creative ideas that you've implemented in your school?
Um, for in our school, we did a march where everyone would get a T-shirt, and it said "Million Dollar Million T-shirt March for Anti-Bullying," and you would write like something like inspirational on the T-shirt, and um, everyone would also get a piece of paper, and you would write hurtful words that you said and um, hurtful words that have been said to you, and the whole. And there were uh, fire pits, and you would burn your piece of paper that uh, had the school, like the words, the hurtful words that have been said to you. So it's like you're burning away, like bullying, I guess. Um, hi, I'm Kevin from Brenner Middle School. But um, as you, we have a system for bullying. If you um, are being bullied or witness. A bully, be someone being bullied. There's, we have this form that you can do online, or basically we have this. You can report it, but we have this form that you can do online or on the paper, and it's anonymous. So really, it doesn't really matter. Like you don't have to write your name to tell who reported it. Um, we also have a program called MS Hope to. Uh, you write on a slip of paper or report to the guidance counselor, uh, a friend or someone you care about that you think is having a troubled time in middle school. Um, then a group of adults, the uh, guidance counselor, nurse, uh, some teachers, help to work out the problems that these students are having. We um, also made tiles for Uganda to make a outhouse for them because they did not have a bathroom in their schools and we painted pictures on it and we went there and we also went there some, yeah, some teachers and yeah. and we have like this program called girls leadership and it's like when they teach girls how to like lead other people not necessarily like telling everybody what to do but like showing people like how to lead each other but like you can also be following them, just like showing them the way, but not exactly like telling them where to go, what to do, and that's how I think it does the same Hi, Ratner. This is Diane Bannon at Shawnee High School again. We really appreciate your ideas, and they're awesome. We'd like to know what your biggest fear is about leaving your middle school and going to a high school and how you think maybe some of the programs you've heard today you find helpful in making your transition easier. And could we ask that when you speak you walk up toward the mic because we're having trouble hearing the people in the background. Thank you. We didn't hear that. Can you repeat the question? I, I certainly can. We're wondering what the concerns are of your students now in seventh grade moving toward high school. What are your fears about entering high school? You've heard about the program here at Shawnee where uh, freshmen are actually mentored and supported by the students here. What do you think would help you transition into high school and make make your acceptance really felt the first day you walk into school? Um, I feel that like I think your idea is good that the freshmen should get help from the uh, seniors or people who are there last year and that would help them because they could be like the bigger kids who are like seniors and older kids could like easily bully the, the kids who are smaller and don't have power because they they just came to the school and the other kids just like they've been there for a while so they know what's going on and it can be repetitive and like their first year won't be as good so i think your uh, idea is um, pretty good so yeah and i want to use that in our school too so, good job, um. I think that going into high school, it's going to be like a big step, 
and considering it's only a year away, we have a lot to prepare for, and it was it's going to be p tougher than probably going into middle school because it's um, like closer to like being older and stuff. And even going into middle school, it was kind of tough because people, since we were the smaller ones, people would pick on us for saying that we were like uh, not like we weren't as known in the school and stuff. But as we the year goes on, it will get better. And I think since we have all of our friends and stuff, it will help us like get through the bullying in the high school. Okay. Thank you, Radnan. Thanks for your great suggestions. We hope that when you enter high school, you're not your number one fear is not of being bullied that and you know that you have support the minute you walk into a school, and you're great examples of people that are already thinking about inclusion and acceptance and making sure that everyone feels welcome. So thank you for that. Thank you. Can I add? Sure. Um, and the one young lady was talking about a program, um, I guess, with the girls in the school. Uh, we do have a similar program here that one of our students runs. Uh, it's called Operation Beautiful. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Basically, it's a uh, it's a nice little outreach and support uh, mechanism in, in which same thing. There's a, there's a group of girls that are concerned about everybody having acceptance, and the theme is that everybody is beautiful. And they they write inspirational quotes, and it's real simple and easy. They get together like as a, as a club. They write inspirational quotes on post-it notes, and then they post them around the building. They put them on mirrors in the uh, in the girls' bathroom. Uh, just so that uh, when you're going through the day, if you're having a moment where you just uh, you, you just not you're not feeling quite right, you see one of these little notes and it just perks you up and brings you and brings you uh, just kind of brings you back on back back on top. That's what it's designed to do. So it's something real simple and easy. Uh, if you guys haven't tried something like that, it might be something you want to look into. And I, yep, you're good. Uh, so what I don't see that we brought Sterling on board yet. Um, what I'd like to, to um, and we'll start here at Shawnee and then we can move around to the schools. The topic I'd like to discuss right now is service. We have this Martin Luther Day of service where each and every one of us can contribute in one way or another. We'd like to hear your thoughts possibly about what happens in your school and also what you can do as an individual. So we're going to start here with, um, we'll start with Chris. Shawnee has multiple service opportunities because we feel definitely getting involved in the community is a great way to give back. Um, and for the National Honor Society, for example, uh, that is a very um, influential organization of Shawnee. A lot of people are, are, are part of it, are a member of the society. And there's so many requirements for uh, community service, and all for the better, because in order just to get into NHS, you have to do so many different service opportunities in the community and get hours signed off. And then after that, there are different point systems, different events, different activities, where you further um, participate in community service events to stay involved with National Honor Society. And then also we have Senior Day of Service. Where Senior Day of Service is where we take one day out of the school year, where seniors more or less get to skip class. But in order to do it, they have to go and do a project around the community, whether it be like planting a tree or helping someone out working at a food bank. Um, we have a whole group of seniors, a couple hundred kids going out and doing something good for the community. Um, something else we have to do is collect donations. I know when we did, when Hurricane Sandy hit, we had a huge relief effort called Save Our Shores, where we sold raffle tickets, we had t-shirts. Um, there are several other clubs that are also helping out our community. We have one called Youth for Truth that's going into middle schools and promoting uh, childhood reading abilities. We're going in there. We're dressing up. We're helping them read. We're trying to make reading exciting. We're trying to improve the, liter uh, the literacy rate uh, before they even get into Shawnee. And I know that um, uh, centered around uh, Martin Luther King Day, our multicultural club actually Multicultural clubs from each of the uh, four high schools in our area, they got together and uh, they participated um, in a march for Martin. Uh, they went over to, they got on a bus, went over to Lenape High School, and uh, they were doing, a, uh, I guess, like a, a kind of a peaceful march demonstration type of thing uh, for, for different uh, awareness. Also, our, our student council, we have a state charity, Hugs for Brady for Pediatric Cancer. 
And that is um, a very, very notable charity. And we've had so many different events at Shawnee where all the profits from those events, whether it be a student faculty basketball game, whether it be a Shawnee's Got Talent, a little student council event, a powder puff, all these different events that we run at Shawnee through student council, all the profits from those events go to Hugs for Brady. Um, and it's a really you know, moving story, actually, if you want to look into more. Um, but it's this boy who, who, who's um, passed away with pediatric cancer at a very young age, and his mom is a huge advocator for the cause. And we really rallied behind that charity. We've raised lots of money so far, a couple hundred dollars, thousand dollars. I'm actually um, not in student council, but I do like to help out with this effort. And I'm not sure exactly, but their goal is for 10 grand this year. And I think they're on the right path to do that by the end of the school year. So very, uh, very exciting opportunity. Another huge thing we do is we have a blood drive. We have one of the largest high school blood drives in South Jersey. Uh, we really try to promote it as much as we can. Everybody really knows about it. We have t-shirts, we have snacks, we have drinks, Red Cross comes. We deck out our entire back gym with uh, tables. And we have a vast majority of the students who are able to donate blood, donate blood so we're trying to save lives. Uh, and we schedule it so that it's an easy time. We are understanding of the classes and the teachers really work with our school to try to make sure that there's more important things sometimes in learning. We can take one day off to make sure that we save some lives. And I don't think we've given Bayside an opportunity to speak, so we'd like to hear your contributions as well. Um, what's going on in your school as far as projects, and also what can you contribute in terms of day of service? Um, well, we, I want to start out, we want to start out um, telling you guys kind of a little bit of who the people are in this room. Um, we're fortunate that our school has a well-established program um, called Peer Counselors. And um, just to tell you a little bit of what it is, um, our students at the end of their sophomore year are able to apply to become a peer counselor. And um, they're interviewed um, by a panel of administrators and teachers and the counselor um, at our school. Um, academics are taken in consideration, teacher recommendations. Lots of factors are looked at when choosing who is going to come into our peer counseling program. Um, the students that are selected um, then go on their junior year and they take a course their whole junior year of peer counseling. Um, and that class is taught by um, the school counselor, and it covers topics such as um, empathy and sympathy and being genuine, um, you know, strategies and techniques, techniques for counseling um, their peers. Um, we go on and we discuss specific topics that are relevant to students in our school, such as body image and substance abuse and um, bullying. Um, really go in depth on, you know, signs, how do we recognize this, how do we attack this, how do we bring awareness to these issues. Um, once these students complete their junior year, then their senior year, they are actually assigned to students in the school. Um, these come from um, parents that may ask for their child to have a peer counselor, um, teachers that may ask, um, you know, the counselor, if there's a peer counselor that can come see a student in their class. Um, the school counselor may say, send one of the seniors to go talk to a student. And this um, program that we have is proven to be very effective with those students in our um, school that do need, you know, just an older person that's been in their shoes to talk to them and help them. Um, and our school, we, we are fortunate, our school on campus, we have preschool all the way through 12th grade. So um, these peer counselors, they they not only work with high schoolers, they work with our middle schoolers, they work with our elementary age students as well. And since we're all on one campus, our younger students are still able to see their faces, know who they are, um, and kind of have just a buddy, a bigger person on campus that they can kind of look to for um, advice or just a listening ear. So all these students that you see in the room, um, they are either juniors that are in training to be peer counselors, or they are either our seniors that are actually our leaders and our peer, camp peer counselors on campus. Um, and then we also do have um, a couple of um, clubs and organizations that some of them we're going to speak about. Yeah. All right. Um, for my senior project, I did the Kind Club, which is for fifth and sixth grade girls. 
and basically it's just where they can come and talk about um, the challenges that they face in intermediate school and um, I kind of talk to them about why girls bully and um, their motives behind why they're mean to each other and um, just to kind of put a stop to it at an early age and um, help them realize that it really is important to be kind and uh, they're a really sweet group of girls and that's been really effective so that's my senior project. Uh, and one of our peer counselors, she's not with us today, but um, she helps. She helped organize um, a club that we have called the Girls Wellness Club, and it um, involves our middle school girls. And it's kind of along the same lines, I think, um, that Shawnee was talking about. Um, it's just a group of girls that talk about issues that middle school girls face. Um, they do service projects, giving back to the school, and it's all about promoting um, just a healthy personality, a healthy self-image at the middle school age for those girls. Um, we have a thing that we've done two years in a row where the entire high school will get a different color bracelet, and then everyone will go sit with their color and kind of meet someone new and talk and kind of mix it up. <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, here at Bayside, we have three major service groups. We have Boys Service Club, Girls Service Club, and Key Club. Um, I'm president. Of, I'm vice president of the Boys Service Club. And some of the major activities we have planned for the spring are, uh, in the fall, since we don't have much time considering sports and all that stuff, we'll do smaller activities to volunteer. But in the spring, we have a couple of major habitat builds that we're getting scheduled. And then for the younger kids who are under 16 and can't do the habitat builds, uh, Habitat for Humanity also has some painting opportunities and they have resale stores where when they go and tear down a house to build a new one, they'll take like all the nails they can use, all the scrap metal and stuff, they'll bring it back to a store and refurbish it. And some of our younger students will go there and they'll just help stock shelves, um, clean some metals, that sort of stuff. Thank you, Bayside. We really like your contributions, and um, sounds like all of them are effective. Would we like to move now to Saint, back to St. Joseph's, and comments, contributions, ideas for day of service, uh, if you could share with all of us. Um, my name is Regina, and I'm a senior here at St. Joseph. And one of the things I learned as soon as I walked in here as a freshman is that we're very focused on service, and we like to give back to the community and the world around us. We have different groups like Interact, SGA, and NHS who organize walks and corn drops. We even have games for charities like March Madness, who donates to Alex's Lemonade Sand, and field hockey games for cancer and other diseases. I've personally been involved in NHS, so I've um, also done a lot of service with them. Uh, last year we had a student teacher day for junior achievement where uh, the NHS members went over to um, the elementary school that's affiliated with our high school and we taught the younger grades for the for the day and it was kind of it was kind of to help them like relate to like respect for like the students and everything and it was just kind of a, like a fun day for them so there was and there's also been multiple other uh, service projects that we've done throughout the year. Uh, hello, my name is Jordan, and this year we did a project for obviously Hurricane Sandy, and while we did two separate projects, one was for we did a walk around Hamilton, and that raised money that helped to raise money for the Sandy victims, and we also sent a bus of students down to Brigantine, and they helped clean up the Sandy aftermath that uh, was left over, and it was volunteer work, so that uh, helped out the community afterwards. Um, back to Joseph in Kenya, we raised money to put a water pump in his village so him and his family could have fresh water. 
Hi, um, I'm Nicholas and I'm a senior. Um, just to touch up on our March Madness, um, each grade has various uh, charities that they sponsor, such as Alex's Lemonade Stand, doing to cancer, Alzheimer's patients, and so on. And it raises money for those charities so that we can help people who suffer from these unfortunate uh, diseases and the such. Uh, our field hockey team raises money for the breast cancer awareness, and we also host a blood drive every year so that we can donate blood to people who desperately need it. Adding on to what Brianna said about Joseph, I flew him here, and he stayed in Hamilton for a couple of days, and he talked to us about his culture and what he did where he lived. He was a teacher, and he walked, um, I believe it was like around two to four hours a day just to get to and from school from his house, and he had a walking stick with him, but he didn't use it as a walking stick. He used it to protect himself from animals and other dangerous things that could happen in where he was walking, and he said that we have it so nicely that we have busing transportation to and from school and we also sold jewelry that he brought from his uh his his country in kenya he brought jewelry and we sold it to raise the money for the water pump and to raise money to put a a roof on one of the school buildings in kenya my name is joseph magley i'm a senior um Every year, our, our Global Studies class takes a trip to AU. It's American University in Washington, D.C. And last year, the uh, conference focused on racial discrimination and women's rights and how we could fix the problems that occur in those two issues. My name is Maria. I'm a senior. Um, we also do a lot of different things to help raise money. Like, we've done a walk for poverty and a walk for Sandy. We also have different clubs, like the Interact Club, and that's basically, it's kind of in a way like Global Studies, but we're trying to like, reach out in the community more and raise a lot more money, and sometimes we'll try to like communicate together and work things out. And we also, for um, the freshmen with sports, I know that I've played ever since like I was a freshman, and the seniors always try to make me feel welcome, and we'll try to uh, pair the freshmen up with the seniors just so we, they have somebody in the school, especially on the first day, because that could be nerve-wracking. Thank you, St. Joseph. The excellent ideas, and I can see that you're making your contribution right in Hamilton to make this world a better place. We're going to come back to St. Joseph, but the question I'd like to pose, and I think I'd like to start, um, right here in Shawnee is a personal thought from our con c contributors about what they think might be another idea that could make a school a safer environment, um, one where everyone is welcome. Hopefully with all of the uh, programs that we have designed and that we're talking about today that freshman four years from now that are coming a bit into Shawnee High School will have already heard of this fabulous program they have going on here, and they won't be apprehensive, and they'll have done their job. So it's making a difference every day. What I'd like to, to take right now is your ideas that may not have already been implemented, that possibly from an experience you've encountered what do you think might be an idea that a school could consider in the future that would make you feel safer, um, safer, more welcome, and that everyone in the environment was accepted and honored? So we're going to start here with um, Tom at Shawnee, and then we'll move to the other schools. Do you mind just give me a moment? I don't start mind. Off. Could you go ahead? No, you start off by telling me any moment today. Okay. Um, to speak to uh, that issue, one of the things that we did in partnership with uh, the Anti-Defamation League uh, to make our school a no place for hate uh, school, um, one of the things that we did is we, um, we actually had all of our students, they signed a resolution of respect, that basically they were going to treat everyone with respect and be uh, appreciative of everyone in the school building. And one of the activities that we did, and this kind of gathers that information from the students and gives us uh, you know, data that we can use to drive programs moving forward, 
Um, we actually had every single uh, student in the building write a letter to, uh, to the principal. And the context of that letter basically was what could you do to make your school a safer place? So it fits right along uh, in line with uh, what Diane's saying there. And just as I've, been re as I've been reading through some of those different letters, uh, there are a couple things that just kind of hit me as I've been going through them. And one of them was the kids want their classrooms to be more of a community. Uh, they want them to be, they want them to be able to feel comfortable in their classroom and they want their teachers to be able to make that classroom, each and every classroom as they go throughout the day, be a safe place and feel like a community, almost feel like a, a family. Uh, kids were also, the students were also uh, asking for more assemblies uh, during the year to help educate uh, their peers uh, about different things that are going on. Um, they were also looking for other opportunities to be able to talk to other students, and I really like what I've heard from some of the other schools in terms of forming groups where, uh, whether they be an informal group where kids can go and talk to their peers about issues that are going on or uh, even ways of writing it down and then maybe having somebody contact you after the fact so that you can discuss that. Uh, I liked what I was hearing from some of the other schools, and it sounds like you guys have put that in place uh, in your building. But that might be something that we could look forward to do um, here in the future. And uh, peer groups. Um, and I know that we've kind of got that started here, but as, as we go along uh, over the next couple of years, I really want to uh, continue to... Uh, look for ways for kids to be able to talk to other kids about uh, what's going on and be able to, to deal with some of those issues. So those are some of the things that we gathered just from putting our feelers out to the kids um, in our building. And it was very insightful to actually uh, read those letters uh, that, the, that the students were writing to, to the building principal. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the future of this is going to be in peer-to-peer. -peer. It's not going to be administration to peer at nearly as much as it is now. Um, I feel like even though the administration can be able to they can still help out. For example, uh, in classes, uh, teachers ought to say get into groups. Uh, usually when you're in a group, you get with people you know, you're people you, co you feel comfortable with. I feel it's important to have people come out of their comfort zone a little bit and maybe make some new friends because even though you've been to high school, it's new, you're meeting new people. You still keep your old friends from middle school, and you might be a little uh, more clicky. I know in Shawnee, that's a big problem we have is more clicks. And when we have our senior trip down to Disney, we force you to mix up and go with different people and room with people you might not be as comfortable with. And people say, they're like, oh, how haven't I met this person? We would have been great friends. So in the classes, just kind of trying to mix things up more, get everybody to know one another and create a more homogenous community where everybody knows one another and everybody cares one another. Because a lot of bullying, I feel, uh, comes from a lack of communication and a lack of understanding. And when everybody's understanding everyone else, everybody can see each other in one another's eyes, and everybody is together as one, that's when we're going to start seeing better results. And isn't that going to take time? Yes, but it starts with little things now, maybe just mixing things up here and there and having students uh, try to encourage them to branch out and meet new people. Chris? They did a pretty good job of summing up the question. <laughs> but to add on one thing, I think that similar to our No Place for Hate effort, I think it's really important to have one fundamental program. Everyone is involved in different areas of Shawnee. I'm sure everyone's involved in different areas of your respective schools and you know, have multiple activities on their plate. But if there's one single program, kind of like I would propose almost a Unite Shawnee, where everyone can kind of unite over the fact that, yes, you know, we are Shawnee High School students, and yes, we have our differences, but, you know, respect is the underlying concept. And to use, you know, reiterate some of their points, I agree that it's very important to have a classroom that is safe, a classroom that's fun and interactive. And we, I was at the Congress for No Place for Hate, and one thing that we discussed was maybe we could do more icebreakers in the first couple of weeks. There's, there's some teachers that don't even know, you know, a student's name was just in the back of the class. And there's some environments where it's more of like a, a college lecture hall and less of, a, of an interactive classroom. And I really think that in this fundamental uh, experience, being interactive with one another, knowing all your cla uh, classmates' names, because I'll be honest, there's, there's a couple classes I'm in where I might not recognize one kid's name. And then when they say, oh, okay, I can kind of fit that through. But it should just be so much more united. It should be so much more... Uh, together, and then everyone feels more comfortable. You can say, you know, hey, Tom, 
what did uh, what, what's the homework tonight? Where before I didn't even know Tom's name because it wasn't as interactive. So I definitely think that being comfortable in the classroom and also having a program where everyone feels comfortable, everyone agrees with what the message is, and kind of make a pledge to that program. Yes, I will be respectful. Yes, I will appreciate everyone. And sure, will bullying happen? Maybe, but let's minimize it. Excellent ideas coming from here. I love the idea, even the thought that every student in every school has the ability to send a letter to the principal. I think that would immediately change the environment everywhere because you knew that someone at the top level um, not only cared, but was able to reach down to students who are already active in the community and embark on new programs that will work. I'd like to go to Bayside and we'd like to hear your thoughts or you know, maybe one idea, we're getting short on time now, so one idea that you think that could be implemented that hasn't been mentioned yet that might make your environment just a little bit safer. Um, one thing that um, we have discussed, um, our school, like we said, is very small. Um, we're an independent school, K pre-K-4 through 12th grade, we only have about around 750 students. Um, so we are fortunate that most of our kids do know the other faces that they see on campus. Um, one thing that we think we might, we could probably do a better job of is making ourselves accessible to everyone. Um, we do have, you know, we do have cliques, we have groups within our school and um, we definitely feel that it, it would be a good idea to do more of those mix it up activities where kids are having to step out of their comfort zone and maybe go talk to students in a different grade, students with different interests, and just get everybody, um, everybody outside of their comfort zone and interacting more with students that they may be familiar with but that they don't always talk to. That was one thing that we talked about that we definitely feel could be beneficial on our campus. That's a great idea. Um, just being able to feel that everyone in, in a school environment is approachable is a first step and a great first step. Can we go to Radnor? Is there any ideas Radnor Middle School has that might make your current situation better? We'll just take one comment. We're down to five minutes. Um, I had an idea to help prevent bullying. I think that a lot of things that teachers and people come to present about bullying to kids isn't really that effective. I think that um, kids should talk to other kids about it. I think that would be more effective to kids who are bullies and are and are bullied to make them feel better from a peer that uh, experiences the same things as they do. Thank you. That was a fabulous idea, and we all here at Shawnee agree. Uh, I think we're going to go back to St. Joseph's, and can you give us one idea that hasn't been presented here today? Uh, hi, I'm Jordan again. Uh, I came here to St. Joe. I came here to St. Joseph's as a, as a junior this year, and. I feel that they accepted me as not just a minority of the group or that new kid. They accepted me as a member of the family because we all act as family members here. So I like the fact that everybody can keep an open mind and not just point the odd kid out of the group or something like that. Like everybody here has an open mind. So I'm encouraging, no, we're encouraging everybody to have an open mind here and in this conference, all six schools that take place in this event all over the world and I think that we should just all like have a clear like mind when you meet new people or try to welcome a freshman or talk about the fact that at our school the whole administration knows everybody's name and it's not just like they don't single you out or they don't just like they know you personally it's not just a matter of oh you're this group you're that group we don't single like one particular group out we're just all one family like it's it's a it's a very good experience to keep an open mind and to have everybody like not judge you and just 
uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, uh, just keep it, just like come together as one and not just branch off into their own separate groups. Like, have everybody just be one big mixing pot and, yeah, be there for one another.